All right, this is a case uh, where we're going to implant a T7 toric lens, a 16.5 diopter, and using the femtosecond laser. So I'd like you to look right in the middle of those six white lights and try not to move your eye at all, even as it gets closer here. We will be demonstrating the use of the Varion. And we'll suction, you'll feel a little bit of pressure. And the first thing you will notice is that we have not had to mark the eye in the preoperative area at the six o'clock position. This is a tremendous advantage uh, with the Varion. Um, we have already taken a high definition picture of this eye, uh, which identifies uh, various structures on the iris as well as the lumbal vessels, and we will use that to orient the lens. Uh, you can see the Varion automatically centered the capsule, capsulotomy within the pupil and also placed the incision automatically at the limbus. I have found that the Varion is much better at this than I am in doing it manually. Uh, here we will uh, now see that the placement of the fragmentation, the capsulotomy, is pre-placed uh, with the Varion uh, very accurately. Uh, we have found that the Varion has made it much more efficient for us, not only in the surgical planning, uh, but also intraoperatively. Um, here we are going to begin the procedure. You can see the capsulotomy being done. We are using the grid pattern fragmentation. for incision, arcs, fragmentation. Very efficient. And there we are, we are all finished. And you can see the very nice, complete capsulotomy here with a gutter 360 degrees indicating a free-floating capsule. I still document that after I inject viscoelastic on top of the capsule to making sure that capsule is free. This is a 2.3 incision with a tr uh, reverse trapezoid going to a 2.5 internally. We use the Chang hydrodissection cannula, and I like to hydrodissect sub-incisionally first. As you will notice, uh, there is no side port incision here. This will be a one-hand technique using a pre-chopper. So with that in mind, we want to make sure we get a very complete capsulotomy so the nucleus rotates. I will take the pre-chopper now. We then enter with the pre-chopper and go into the area of the chop made by the femtosecond laser. I use four chops which actually separates the nucleus into eight pieces uh, but I only use the pre-chopper uh, in four of those and separate it into quadrants. If it's a very dense nucleus, I will oftentimes use uh, all eight pieces for very small fragments. When I enter the eye, you can see there's a lot of debris and the anterior capsule is still there, so I will enter in foot position two where I have more vacuum and aspiration and remove debris from the anterior chamber. The Luxor microscope gives us ideal illumination and visualization, which I think is very important in femtosecond laser cataract surgery. Uh, there is a lot of hydration of the nucleus uh, with the fragmentation pattern. This is a grid pattern, as you can see, uh, and the nucleus came out very easily in a moderately dense cataract. We then will remove the fragments uh, of the quadrants here, as you can see. Um, the Centurion FACO machine is, has tremendous fluidics. We are using the balanced tip, uh, which is a double curve, as you can see here, which greatly improves the efficiency 
uh, of the phaco emulsification due to a greater excursion of the tip. And uh, we then wa want to make sure we remove all uh, remaining fragments uh, from the angle uh, and behind the iris. Uh, this is a rather large fragment that we will continue to remove. You see how efficient uh, the phaco emulsification tip is and how incredibly stable the anterior chamber is. We set our intraocular pressure at 75 uh, throughout the procedure, uh, which we find leads to a very deep and stable chamber. This is the polymer tip, which I find tremendously helpful in uh, cortical removal, particularly after femtosecond laser. Uh, as you know, the laser will uh, truncate the uh, anterior uh, portions of the cortex, uh, leaving you no tags really to grab onto. Uh, the polymer tip is able to go um, under the anterior capsule and uh, grasp the cortex very easily. Again, with the Luxor microscope, you see a lot of the uh, material that we never saw before, which is uh, retained on the posterior surface of the anterior capsule, and so we'll be removing that. We are much more diligent as a result of this uh, new microscope because of the visualization being so good. Uh, we can uh, see to make sure that we have um, polished the an uh, posterior surface of the anterior capsule as well as the posterior capsules you see here. Now, oftentimes an argument is made uh, that with a toric lens we might want to leave some of that cortical material for uh, may, maybe better stability. We have not found that to be necessary with toric lenses. Uh, we like to remove as much of the cortical material as we can, even from the posterior surface of the anterior capsule, as we think it leads to less opacification, uh, fibrosis, as well as inflammation. Uh, this is the AutoCert injector. You can see uh, how smoothly and consistently it injects the T7 lens. We then use the plunger to place the implant in the capsular bag. We will then uh, switch on the Varion and you can see the intended axis of 97 pointed out. Again, notice the fact that we do not have any marks uh, on the limbus. Yes, there are small areas of uh, subconch hemorrhage from the uh, suction of the femtosecond laser. However, uh, those uh, disappear very quickly and do not seem to be a problem. I rotate the lens to about 10 degrees uh, short of the intended axis with the uh, Sinsky hook. We then go back in with our polymer tip IA. Uh, I'm a big proponent of going underneath the lens to remove uh, all the viscoelastic, especially when toric lenses. I will go ahead and hydrate uh, the incision, uh, make sure we manipulate the lens back into the capsular bag. So we have found that the Varion is tremendously helpful with toric lenses. Uh, we're very confident that we are uh, on the correct axis here. Uh, as you know, marking the eye can be highly variable and up to five to 10 degrees uh, off, even with the most experienced uh, surgeon or uh, nurse uh, making the marks. Uh, and it can also be very difficult for a patient. So. Uh, these marks are also made with an ink pen uh, that can be two to four degrees uh, wide in itself, creating a lot of variability. Uh, so we are all finished.